All right, I'd like to show you how to derive d tau in spherical coordinates. All we're going to do is take the volume of a cube, a box. In x coordinates, you've seen that finding d tau means taking dx, dy, and dz. <clears throat> in spherical coordinates, we're going to do the same thing, but the width of each side of the box is a little bit more um, involved. So first, let's draw our tiny box in spherical coordinates. The distance from the origin to the location of the box is r. That's this variable. Now in spherical coordinates, remember that theta comes down from the polar axis. It comes down from the z-axis. So theta is measured here. And phi um, is measured counterclockwise from the x-axis. So I've made this tiny amount of sphere by going out a little bit in the radial direction, down a little bit in the polar direction, theta, and into or through, uh, towards or away from the board here in the theta direction. Now the question is, what is the distance, what is the length of each of these sides of the cube? Well, let's start with the simplest one. That's dr. We know that's a length. It's a tiny bit of length in the r direction. All right. The side of that cube right here is dr. The next question has to do with arc length. Remember that arc length is a radius times an angle subtended by some arc. And the arc length is the radius times that angle. In this case, we've got tiny angles, so d thetas and d uh, phi's that we're going to go through. So this one right here, this length is r d theta. The tiny amount of angle that is subtended is d theta, but d theta by itself is not a length. We have to also include the radial distance from um, the origin around which this is being rotated. Now this other one, this distance, is not d phi, nor is it r d phi. It's a little bit more than that. See that the radius that this is rotated around is actually this distance here. And this distance is not r. Instead, you can see from this triangle, that this distance is r <laughs> sine of theta with a little trigonometry there. I'll get out from behind this. Um, and now we have the radius around which we're going to rotate that angle. And so this distance, the one in blue, is r sine theta, that's the radius, multiplied by the small bit of angle around which we're rotating. And so once we put all these side lengths together, just like we did with dx, dy, dz in order to make d tau in Cartesian coordinates, we're going to do the same thing to find d tau in spherical coordinates. And remember that it must have units of length cubed. This has units of length that, because of the r. This has units of length because of the r. And this has units of length. Even though it's inside the differential, um, a little bit of r is still a little bit of length. So now d tau equals r sine theta, so that's one side length, times r d theta times dr. And if I simplify this a little bit, I get r squared sine theta d phi d theta dr. And that's d tau in spherical coordinates. I encourage you to use this d tau to derive a volume that you know, a volume of a sphere. So the volume of the sphere is the sum of all of these little tiny cubes that you could add up in spherical coordinates. The limits of integration, this is going to be three integrals, and the limits of integration must describe where you have the volume. R will go from 0 to whatever radius of the sphere you have, call it capital R. Um, theta will go from 0 to pi, in other words it goes from the polar axis all the way down, 
And if you take that semicircle and rotate it all the way around, 0 to 2 pi, which will be the limits of integration for phi, those will be the three limits of integration. Try that and see if you can get the volume of a sphere. Of course, it's 4 thirds pi r cubed. <laughs>